So what I want to test is if this mini PC right here can actually game at 1440p. Now, this is the B-Link SRE6 with the Ryzen 5 6600H. Now, this is a 6-core 12-thread CPU, but it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. It actually has an integrated iGPU called the Radeon 660M. Now the integrated graphics chip is just built right on into the CPU itself. And what that means is that we're able to have an extremely small package like this, but it does also put some limits on the level of performance that we can realistically have. You can certainly have some impressive results in games in 1080p, but 1440p is a pretty no noticeable increase in the pixel count over 1080p. What that means is that the GPU is going to have to work just that much harder to try to get us any level of performance. See, these iGPUs tend to do better in titles at 720p and 1080p. 1440p is not even really something that's a consideration when they're even designing these. So suffice to say that it is a pretty monumental task to ask of the system. But to help it out, we're gonna pair it with this program called Lossless Scaling. Now you could pick this up on Steam for practically nothing. And what this program actually allows you to do is inject all kinds of different upscaling algorithms into whatever game that you're playing. And what we're gonna be using today is FSR. So by injecting FSR, what we're gonna be able to do is take a 720p gaming image and essentially upscale it up to 1440p with hopefully better image quality than if we were just playing at 720p on a 1440p display with absolutely no upscaling or anything like that. The idea is to essentially try to improve the image quality as much as possible so that the lower resolution is less of a noticeable problem to you and you get an improvement in your overall FPS. But let's see how it actually ends up performing. Now the first title we're going to be taking a look at is Batman Arkham Knight. Here you see running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and this is 1440p and you can tell by the frame rate that the resolution is really taking a beating on this APU. It is just struggling to even maintain a consistent above 20 FPS average and it's overall a pretty brutal and gruesome experience. So now we're going to see if with the lossless upscaling tool, we're actually able to get this to a playable rate. So of course, we're going to drop the game down to 720p. We're going to put it in windowed mode. We're going to have the program upscale this for us. Now, upscaling 720p up to 1440p here nets us a pretty massive increase in performance, where before we couldn't even hit a consistent above 20 FPS gaming experience. Here, we're barely even dropping below 60 with our fps average being well above that now visually speaking we definitely take a hit i'm not going to sit here and tell you that this looks perfect you can definitely tell that it is not as clear or as detailed as full 1440p but i mean the game itself is running here at a beautiful rate and we're getting some pretty incredible levels of performance on here and visually speaking i'm actually stunned that it even looks this good now, I decided to try out Mountain Blade to Banner Lord because I was expecting it to be a pretty demanding game at 1440p, but to my surprise, the game running at the full 1440p resolution with the lowest in-game graphics settings actually gave a surprisingly very playable result in this game at the full 1440p resolution. This was very surprising to me, but overall, the result here was pretty great, and it had me curious now if the program itself would actually net us any real benefit whatsoever and if it would be worth the sacrifice in terms of resolution. So of course using FSR upscaling to upscale 720p up to 1440p we do gain a absolutely massive increase in terms of our performance here. Though visually speaking I think that this game really suffers a lot from using FSR. It really seems like a lot of the detail on the units is just completely lost especially in panning shots like this it certainly wouldn't be something to ruin the overall experience of the game but it can pretty easily just emphasize the pota the potato quality that you're currently playing at so while not ideal it still looks a lot better than you would think 720p being stretched out to 1440p would 
end up looking like. So the next title that I was just extremely curious to see is one that we've seen consistently perform really, really well on these low end systems, and that is Alien Isolation. Here you see it running with the ultra graphic settings. So everything maxed out when we are at 1440p and it's giving a surprisingly playable experience. Certainly not a above 60 gaming experience, but still pretty consistent considering the fact that we're all the way up to 1440p. So in general, I'm really impressed with the results here. That's two games in a row that have really impressed me at this resolution. We're not even using the upscaling yet. But of course, using the upscaling tool here, we are actually able to net a pretty massive increase in terms of performance to the point where you realistically don't even need to scale things down this much. If you went down to 1080p and upscaled that to 1440p, you would already have a very, very nice experience, though you're not getting getting the benefit of, again, the whole integer scaling aspect of this. But I didn't want to just do built-in benchmarks. I wanted to try it out myself. So I decided to boot up the campaign for Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered and just run through a mission with a mix of medium to high graphics setting. And overall, the experience of actually trying to play like this at 1440p was pretty rough. While the average that I was getting wasn't absolutely awful, if you look at the frame time charts, it's pretty much just moving up and down in waves and that's letting you know that i'm not having a very consistent experience and that inconsistency is very noticeable in a game like call of duty where it's all about fast movement and you're kind of just panning across the screen very quickly that inconsistency is felt pretty noticeably switching over to fsr the overall experience is just night and day now we're getting a high refresh rate gaming experience and this feels so much better and made the entire experience far more enjoyable. There is a very noticeable loss in quality, but the increase in playability is absolutely astonishing. And I think that visually speaking, we're not really sacrificing so much that I think it's not worth it. Again, the drop down to 720p is pretty massive, but it honestly is surprising me how surprisingly good it looks on this screen. I'm kind of just blown away. And the last game that I took a look at was Far Cry 3. You're running with the very high graphics preset. And of course, at 1440p, this older title is extremely heavy and is not running well at all. We're not even getting a 30 FPS average and our 1% lows are just barely skating by above 20. In general, this is pretty brutal. I'm sure if I dropped the graphics quality down all the way to the lowest, we could probably boost the performance here. But in general, general this is pretty brutal but once i actually use the scaling tool we're actually able to play the game at 1440p at an above 60 fps average with one percent lows dipping down into the 40s but not enough to really ruin the experience and if you look at our frame time charts they are far more consistent that's letting you know that overall you're gonna have a much better time in general it's pretty impressive what you can actually do with this fsr injector the level of performance here that we can actually manage is really great to see now obviously this doesn't mean that you should get a 1440p displaced to start gaming on a mini PC. This is more for a situation where you would like to actually get a higher resolution display, but you might not necessarily have the gaming capability to support that. A 1440p display isn't just good for gaming. It makes the whole experience of using a PC much better because you get a lot more screen real estate. If you're doing any schoolwork or productivity work, or you work from home or anything like that, even if you don't game, it makes sense to consider getting a 1440p display. So if you have a system that's not necessarily powerful enough to support 1440p, you could certainly use a tool like this to boost your games at whatever resolution it actually does support up to whatever the resolution of your display is. Because while you might not be able to game at full 1440p, when you're not gaming, you're actually still able to utilize the full 1440p resolution when you're doing productivity tasks, when you're watching videos. 
A higher resolution like this makes the overall experience of using your computer better. You can take full advantage of that while knowing that your GPU might not be powerful enough for the full resolution, but you could still use these tools to get a overall better gaming experience with only a slight sacrifice in visual quality. This of course is going to depend on the specific games and FSR works better with certain titles than others. But in general, I do think that it's nice to experiment with if you're having trouble with with a specific title but all this does is get me very excited to try out some higher end integrated graphics to see if maybe something like a 680m or a 780m will be able to do full 1440p gaming and if not what kind of a boost could we see with using a tool like this perhaps maybe 4k gaming